I'm going to be recording a video. Uh, actually, I'm going to start a group in a little bit and record the uh, Pomala bottle afterwards. The reason being is it really does smell out the room and it will make it kind of hard for me to breathe and finish my talk with the, the smoke exposure, not to mention what it will do to the other people in the room. What I'm doing now, before it starts, is going to show how the, po uh, the bottle was constructed. I often get calls or emails from people wanting to know how to make the bottle. And basically it was a very simple process. Um, this was actually a Pamala bottle, the way they were shaped and the way the lid was constructed 30 years ago. I think they have gone through some modifications since then, but the same principles kind of apply. All it is, is we took the uh, bottle, the cap itself, and drilled a hole in it. I made the hole a little bit smaller than this pipe. This pipe was a clear plastic when I started, and it was uh, basically turning into a mouthpiece to hold the cigarette. You'll see that the hole goes through the bottom of the uh, of the cap and the pipe was inserted through and then I actually used a little bit of uh, model airplane glue to kind of seal it because this has to be a very tight seal or else um, when you try to inhale with it too much air will be sucked in along the perimeter of the base here and then the, the bottle won't smoke correctly. Then it's just a matter of assembling it and using it as a smoking machine. The way it works, when I push out on this, uh, when I push it in on the bottle, it will exhale air. It's the same thing that a person does when they basically um, breathe out air. Their lungs are pulling themselves back together where I'm artificially pushing this. When you let go, it will inhale. This will smoke a cigarette. In a few minutes, or actually in probably about two hours, I'm going to use a cigarette in this demonstration, and you'll see how much smoke will come in as compared to what comes out. I use this bottle for two purposes. One is I do want people to see how much smoke comes in. People get the idea they take in smoke, they blow it out. They take in a little bit more smoke, they blow it out. And they really get the impression that they're blowing out most of the smoke. When someone takes a drag on a cigarette and blows out the smoke, nine-tenths of the smoke that comes in stays in the lung. They're blowing out one-tenth. Even if a person were trying to get secondhand smoke exposure, to get, to get to what some people would refer to as they try to get by when they're first quitting smokers, they try to get by them so they can try to, you know, catch some of their smoke. Well, even if they were to stand in front of them and the person would blow all the smoke straight in your face and then you would try to catch it all in, <laughs> the most you would get is 10% of the smoke that's, that's there. Nicotine would settle out of the air almost instantly, but as far as the smoke, you're going to get a very small percentage of what's left inside that smoker. This bottle will show that. It will show how much comes in and how much stays in the lung as compared to what comes out. This is important to help people visualize what they're putting in their lung when they smoke, and also this is important for the addressing the secondhand smoke issue. People think, oh, what's the use in quitting smoking? There's so much smoke if I'm exposed to it. The amount of smoke and the amount of chemicals that people take in from secondhand smoke is nothing compared to the amount of smoke they take in from firsthand smoke. And this is a very clear indication of that when you see what comes in. All right, I'm going to stop this, uh, this video now, and at the end of the presentation, I'm going to repeat the, the Pamala bottle, which I'm going to do during the presentation, too, so you can see how much smoke comes in compared to what actually ever comes out. All right, we're going to do the demonstration now. I'm going to try to make sure that I can that you can see what's going on inside the bottle, what's going on inside the room. Um, I actually just did the demonstration, so there's still a little bit of smoke left in here. But generally, you're not seeing a whole lot of smoke come out of this bottle right now. Normally, when I start this, there's no smoke in here. The cigarette that I'm using is a Marlboro uh, Golden Light. I think I talked about that before. It's a it's a low tar nicotine cigarette. It's a filter cigarette. I'm going to get this lid. I want you to watch first what burns off the tip of the cigarette. If you notice, we didn't go very far down on that drag. I'm going to blow off the smoke that came in from that one puff. And again, I'm hoping this shows up on the video. I think it will. All right. I'm going to now, I'm going to get closer in, and I'm going to show you what's burning off the tip. But also, look what's coming in the bottle off one drag off a low-tar nicotine filter cigarette. Now. I'm going to blow out the smoke that came in. I'm going to blow it straight at the, at the uh, camera here. Whenever you see a person smoke, you don't see them all of a sudden blow out, puff after puff after puff, trying to get the smoke out. I always joke about this in the clinic. I will say, I'll take a drag. When a person exhales afterwards, they blow about one-tenth, which is about this much. Then they take their next puff, 
and then they got a lung full. Seven to ten drags per day, and I was, I was starting to say before, if you ever see a person take a puff and all of a sudden blow up this much smoke, get the heck out of the room, that person's on fire. No one blows this smoke out. Nine-tenths of what comes in the lung stays in the lung. I'm going to take one more drag off here, again, just to make sure you're seeing this, so you can see what comes in the bottle on one drag, and I was talking earlier about the mouthpiece. I'm going to put this out. Where did I put Oh, there it is. I'm going to blow out the excess smoke. Whenever I do this demonstration, I always do this. I blow all the smoke out that I can before I get in my car. Just because I don't want to stink up the car. Um, even so, even though I've done all that blowing out, this, tar, this bottle has turned pretty brown. But the mouthpiece is where it really shows what happened here. The mouthpiece has had, again, somewhere around a thousand cigarettes. I've used this in about 350 um, clinic settings where I do it the first day, and then the seminars like I just did. And in the seminars I've done maybe 650, maybe a few more. But we're talking about a thousand cigarettes. That's how much tar collected in. Now, while that may sound like a lot, again, it's when a person who smokes, you know, 20 cigarettes a day will smoke in 50 days. People smoking two packs a day, they're doing this in under a month. When you see this, you start to understand where the lungs are turning the colors. When you look at the page we have on smoking effects in the lung and how black and brown the lungs are, and smokers say, oh, their lungs can't look like that, their lungs look like that. They've been accumulating this tar for decades, and, you know, they, they should not be a bit surprised at how discolored those lungs are. Okay, I know you've been wanting to see this for a long time, and it was the one thing that I have on the Internet. You know, I have all the stories, and I have all these different um, pictures, but I never felt that we could capture the Pamala bottle. This, I hope, will fix a vet situation where you can really tell. And again, it's not even getting the sense of the room. The room right now has a haze to it. It smells bad. I mean, I got a person here who's working on quitting smoking who, who's nodding his head, and I don't want to throw him on camera. But anyway, you get, you get the idea of what's happening here. The way to avoid ever having to face that kind of exposure again. Because again, secondhand smoke does not pour smoke in like that. The way to avoid that exposure again is just understanding, you know, never taking a cigarette again, never you know, putting a lighter or a match to a cigarette, putting in your lung, you will never get smoke pouring into your lungs in that, that manner again. It will never be something you will have to face as long as you stick to your personal commitment to never take another puff.